多好的森林啊！如今成了这个样子。Such a nice Mitsubishi, and now look at it, all empty and deserted. What a shame! Mitsubishi Motors, the young giant that once rose from Japan's Mitsubishi heavy industries, announced a shocking decision on October 24th that will bring an end to its automobile production history in China. This means that the GAC Mitsubishi Motors factory in Changsha, Hunan Province, will no longer produce any Mitsubishi cars. The once bustling factory will be transformed by GAC Group into a production base for its 100% electric vehicle brand, GAC Aeon. Mitsubishi Motors and Mitsubishi Corporation will withdraw their investments, choosing instead to focus on maintaining their automotive sales in the Chinese market. Mitsubishi Motors has swiftly shifted its focus to a new battleground, the Southeast Asian market. Limited new car development resources will be concentrated here, including the launch of the small hybrid van Expander aimed at the Southeast Asian countries, as well as the production of commercial EVs in Indonesia. Simultaneously, Mitsubishi Motors has boldly invested 200 million euros in Renault's new EV company Ampere. Europe will become a new battleground for Mitsubishi Motors. By procuring EVs developed and produced by Ampere and selling them under its own brand, Mitsubishi Motors officially kicks off its counteroffensive against Chinese EVs in Europe. Notably, automotive giants such as Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW, which have faced setbacks in the Chinese market, have also decided to launch a counteroffensive in the European market. In the hybrid vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles field, Japanese and European companies leveraging consumer support for plug-ins can fully recover from their initial lag in the EV sector. Mitsubishi Motors, the youngest car manufacturer in Japan, has been flying solo since breaking away from Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in the 1970s. By 2018, it had secured a stable position on Forbes Global 2000 list, ranking 810th. Although not as large in scale as the industry giants, Mitsubishi Motors has never been overshadowed in terms of brand influence in China's vast market. Its investment journey in China can be deemed successful. In the late 1990s, Mitsubishi Motors formed a powerful alliance with Chinese state-owned enterprises, establishing two engine factories in Shenyang and Harbin. The 4G6, 4G1, and 4G9 series engines became the heart of domestic cars. At that time, while Volkswagen's engines performed better, they were unwilling to share, whereas Mitsubishi boldly sold their engines. With competitive pricing, large production volume, and mature technology, Mitsubishi engines became the first choice for many domestic cars, marking a decisive victory for Mitsubishi Motors. Knowing they were not the strongest in the complete car market, they chose to dominate with their engines, earning considerable wealth. In the complete car sector, Mitsubishi Motors also made impressive strides. In the 1970s, they introduced commercial vehicles to China. In 1985, they cooperated with Liuzhou Minibus Factory to produce the L100 minivan. In 1997, they brought the renowned Pajero V31 to China. In 2012, Mitsubishi Motors established GAC Mitsubishi in collaboration with the GAC Group. In 2016, the third generation of GAC Mitsubishi's locally produced Outlander received widespread acclaim. Between 2017 and 2019, GAC Mitsubishi sales soared to new heights, achieving impressive sales of 117,300 units, 144,000 units, and 133,000 units, respectively. However, the pandemic caused a sharp decline in GAC Mitsubishi sales. From 2020 to 2022, sales dropped to 75,000 units, 66,000 units, and a staggering 33,600 units. By the first quarter of 2023, this number had shrunk to just under 4,000 units. The sudden turn of events undoubtedly dealt a heavy blow to Mitsubishi's hot streak in the Chinese market, but it may also have served as an opportunity for the company to reset and start anew. Mitsubishi Motors, renowned for its robust and durable vehicles, fuel efficiency, and spacious interiors, once held a reputation as the king of cost performance. However, as the SUV market becomes an increasingly fierce battleground with a surge of new energy vehicle models, Mitsubishi Motors, despite launching the world's first mass-produced electric car, the iMe EV, in 2009, appears to be struggling to withstand the intensifying competition. Analysts point out that Mitsubishi Motors' scale is simply too small, with an annual production of only 1 million vehicles and 100 billion Japanese yen allocated for research and development each year. This is a stark contrast to Toyota's 1.24 trillion yen and Honda's 908 billion yen R&D investments. Therefore, in China's electric vehicle battleground, Mitsubishi Motors can only leverage the technical strength of its joint venture partner GAC Group to conduct limited sales under the Mitsubishi brand. 
As the Chinese automotive market gradually shifts towards EVs, companies like BYD, which hold a leading position in electric vehicle development, may further strengthen their market presence. On the other hand, those deemed as losers, including some state-owned enterprises, may face the risk of being phased out. In response, Mitsubishi Motors has decided to withdraw from the Chinese market, where fierce price competition has led to low profits. Interestingly, following the announcement of this withdrawal decision, Mitsubishi Motors' stock price actually rose, indicating that the market perceives this as a wise strategic move. China's EV industry faces global scrutiny. In the global battlefield of the electric vehicle industry, China holds a leading position but is currently engaged in a fierce battle. In 2023, the rise of China's automobile manufacturing industry captured global attention, with up to 60% of the world's sales in electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles being manufactured in China. Amidst the ever-changing international political climate, Chinese automobiles rapidly filled the void in the Russian market, securing a significant market share. However, behind this impressive facade, some experts believe that the growth of China's domestic automobile market has quietly reached its peak. History has shown that the climax of auto sales often synchronizes with the peak of economic bubbles. Once the bubble bursts, the market size is expected to fluctuate between 70% to 90% of its peak over the following 20 years. Taking Japan as an example, auto sales reached a historic peak of 7.77 million units in 1990, but sales remained between 5 and 6.8 million units over the next two decades. In recent years, due to a declining population and waning interest in cars among the younger generation, Japan's car sales have fallen to between 60 and 70 percent of 1990 levels. In 2023, new car sales in China are expected to reach approximately 27.6 million units, marking three consecutive years of growth. However, if export factors are excluded, domestic sales in China have been declining for five consecutive years since the peak in 2017. Additionally, the turmoil in China's real estate market poses a significant challenge to the automotive market. Some believe that if 2017 is considered the peak of China's car sales, then the country's annual car sales in the future may stabilize between 20 and 25 million units, no longer maintaining the high growth rates of the past. Within China, there is an overcapacity in electric vehicles, with millions of unsold cars in inventory. Despite this, international automotive giants continue to invest heavily in China, pushing this oversupply situation to the extreme. Chinese companies, in an effort to survive, are forced to seek overseas markets. This is supported by substantial subsidies and tax incentives from the Chinese government. Meanwhile, the European Union has begun anti-dumping investigations into Chinese manufactured electric vehicles. The path to expansion for Chinese companies is becoming increasingly difficult. This prevents an ironic situation. The more China becomes a driving force in the global adoption of electric vehicles, the more problems arise and the more conflicts emerge with other countries. While China is rapidly advancing the development of electric vehicles, this intense global wave of electric vehicles is encountering significant resistance and skepticism internationally. In the United States, the strike by the United Auto Workers Union (UAW) serves as a dramatic turning point, raising concerns that employment opportunities in the traditional automobile industry may gradually decrease with the proliferation of electric vehicles. Additionally, a June survey by the Pew Research Center revealed a growing opposition to the decision to ban the sale of gasoline vehicles by 2035. This view has increased by eight percentage points in just two years, reaching 59 percent. In the same month, the Wall Street Journal quoted Toyota Chairman Takeshi Uchiyamada, who pointed out that the push for eco-friendly electric vehicles is overlooking the majority opinion. This report suggests that the originally harsh criticism of Toyota's electric vehicle efforts in the United States may be starting to shift subtly. In Europe, the electric vehicle revolution is also experiencing a fierce clash of ideas. After 2035, the sale of vehicles with engines running on synthetic fuels will be allowed, bringing new variables to automotive company strategies. The high cost of synthetic fuels has led to a surge in demand for plug-in hybrid vehicles and hybrid vehicles. European automotive giants like Mercedes-Benz and BMW showcased PHVs alongside EVs at international auto shows, marking a rare strategic shift in an era dominated by the concept of pure electric vehicles. According to data from the European Automotive Manufacturers Association, the sales of PHVs and HVs are steadily rising in Europe, with the market share reaching 34.5 in July, closing in on the 35.8 percent share of gasoline vehicles. This data is not only a testament to market changes, but also a sign of a shift in thought. Hydrogen-powered vehicles: a game-changing revolution. The electric vehicle market may be on the brink of an unprecedented upheaval. 
According to a 2017 market survey by KPMG, which pulled 1,000 automotive executives, 78% of these leaders firmly believe that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have a more promising future than electric vehicles, signaling a potential technological revolution. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles can be refueled at a much faster rate, a significant advantage that leaves electric vehicles in the dust. Meanwhile, 62% of the executives predict that challenges related to infrastructure will lead to the collapse of the lithium battery-powered electric vehicle market. Global automotive giants such as Toyota and Hyundai are shifting their focus to hydrogen technology, increasing their investments, and sparking a technical revolution in hydrogen-powered vehicles. Governments in countries like Japan and the United States are actively promoting hydrogen technology and betting on the future. Japan aims to have 800,000 hydrogen vehicles on the road by 2030, while U.S. President Biden has committed to investing $8 billion in the production of green hydrogen. Safety represents another battleground. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, with their high-strength carbon fiber reinforced plastic tanks and exceptional safety designs, have achieved the remarkable feat of zero fire incidents, directly challenging the safety of electric vehicle batteries in China's new energy industry. Moreover, scientists have significantly reduced the cost of hydrogen production by using inexpensive nickel as a catalyst, enabling hydrogen refueling stations to produce their own green hydrogen on site, bringing this dream ever closer to reality. Furthermore, this revolution is not limited to passenger cars. Renault has even developed a hydrogen concept car for its Formula One team. The lightweight advantages of hydrogen fuel cells make their application in public and commercial transportation vehicles a possibility. With other manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes, and Lexus joining the fray, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are rapidly changing the automotive industry landscape. In this context, the fate of China's new energy vehicle industry hangs in the balance. If it cannot transform in time and seize the opportunities presented by this technological shift toward hydrogen energy, the once thriving market may face collapse in the, new in the near future. Hydrogen-powered vehicles represent not just a technological revolution, but also a reshaping of the global automotive industry's power structure. Benefits done right. Though Mitsubishi Motors has quietly withdrawn from the Chinese market, its handling of the remaining assets and personnel is admirable, standing out in an era dominated by ruthless competition and profit-driven motives. Rather than resorting to a fire sale of the remaining car inventory, GAC Mitsubishi has orderly transferred the vehicles to secondary market dealers, committing to ongoing maintenance services and demonstrating the conscience and responsibility of a well-established enterprise. During the challenging times of the pandemic, when sales were low, Mitsubishi Motors provided incredibly generous treatment to its employees. Staff members, who worked for only about 100 days over three years, received their full salaries, a stark contrast to many domestic enterprises in China that often sacrifice the interests of ordinary employees, defaulting on wages or pushing employees to invest in risky financial products. For employees willing to work at GAC Aeon, Mitsubishi Motors offered a one-time compensation of one to three times their monthly salary. Even those who chose to find employment elsewhere received compensation far above industry standards. Such a dignified and generous departure should be highly commended. Yet, some fail to see the bigger picture, distorting the facts and slandering these legitimate actions as malicious compensation and disrupting market order. Such absurd logic begs the question, if this is deemed malicious, shouldn't this malice be something domestic Chinese enterprises urgently need to learn from? Legal compensation is merely a baseline, but too many Chinese enterprises treat it as a ceiling. Clearly, when it comes to valuing employees, domestic enterprises in China have a long and challenging journey ahead.